Um, Agua has a couple things. We talked a little bit about this. This is relating to what's called the piercing pump. So one of the first basics you might do might be like, oh look, grasshopper. See? I'm standing in horse stance and I'm doing piercing pump. And you can start doing that, trying to turn on your center. You can also do it shifting your, your weight from side to side. And then of course, if you want, you can start to shift and do other kind of stances and movements, correct? All right. We're going to talk a little bit of a used piercing palm, but we're going to do it in a little bit more fancy way, which is called like the overturning palms. And it relates to something. Look at your palm. That's a yin. Turn the palm away. Yang. Okay, so yin palm, the bones in the forearm are parallel. Yang palm, they're going to cross. And yin yang, you don't have to get too good. Yin palm, yang palm. Let's, uh, let's do this one. Put the palm up. Turn it down. Yin palm, yang palm. Let's uh, turn it in here and then turn it out. This will put a little more torque. Okay, yin palm, yang palm. So what do we have? We have yin palm, yin palm, yang palm, yang palm. Right. Like that. And of course, if we turn, if we take advantage and turn it out, we can do this with it. Let's do this, yin palm. Yin palm, yin palm, yin, yang palm, turn it down, yang palm, yang palm. So like you'll see as you start doing this, I'm gonna have you do a very simple thing. I want you to pretend that there's a figure uh, eight. Everybody knows what a figure eight looks like. We're gonna do the one, we're gonna take part of the overturning palm and we're gonna lead with the little finger and I'm gonna show you this. You're gonna go down, palm up, you're gonna turn it down, around, and you want to feel the little finger lead up around the top of the eight. See that? Like this. And you can almost do it just with the fingertips, right? So Joe, uh, Joe was talking a lot about looking at the progression of joint work. We're going to do this in a second, like so, okay? Everybody seen that? It's, it's a little bit hard to do it first, but once you get a little bit of dexterity with it, you can do it. Now, there's an opposite one that we're not going to do today. Put your hand down. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna like start to lead with the this this finger with the index finger this way. See that? So it's an opposite figure eight. Okay. So if you were here and you turned it down and came kind of part way back up, and then you turned it back this way and came up, you'd be doing kind of a little finger and then a index finger. Right? Uh, clear? And, and look what I did. Uh, yin palm, yin palm, yang palm, yang palm. And then yang palm, yang palm, yin palm, yin palm. Right? And if I bring it up top, I'll have done a, a yang palm, yang palm, coil it down. So, you see that? So the one we're going to play with today is basically this inward one. And we're going to play a little bit more with just the bottom part of this. Does that make sense? Not that we're, we're, we will touch on this. Now, what this does is this takes the basic piercing palm and it starts to put a spiral on it, okay? So instead of me just piercing straight ahead like this or even with a little bit of a turn, I'm gonna be doing some spiraling action. And what I wanna take you through, you have to understand that when you can start doing things with your hands and fingers and digits, there's a lot of brain tissue that goes into that. There's a lot of brain tissue that's committed to this. You know, so I can start doing all kinds of things. Actually, this hand is doing the one that we're going to work on. This hand starts doing the other one. So like this. So what I'm going to have you do, we're going to come here and we're going to, we're going to pierce out. So if we can get in here, we're going to pierce this way. And then I'm going to have you bring your weight up to your navel. And as you do that, you have to use this pushing action to overturn the palm. And then you're going to fall back down and pierce. Now from here you're going to pull and you're going to pierce this guy all the way across. So now the way you see it, when you want to do this little curly cue, you want to bring the weight up to the navel here and then fall back down and then pull. pull.
start here. I'm going to bring this up here and it falls back down the hill. I use that energy to create another technique forward. A little bit backwards and a little bit forward. Now I use the whole technique to shift over to this side and then here. Like that, right? And then here. And what this is doing, it's teaching you things you can do with your hand very, very well as a brain tissue. You want to try and make what this coiling action with the hand is go in here. So eventually, it not just be the fingers, it'd be the wrist, then it'll be here, okay? And then it'll be the whole arm, all right? And when you do that, the feedback through the fingers, wrist, elbow, and shoulder, pretty soon your body has to be able to accommodate that. Your body doesn't have to do much to accommodate this, does it? We're just using our fingers. But if, as you start getting to the elbow and you start doing this, you start seeing your body has to accommodate a little bit to follow this pattern. And this basic that I'm doing here with your wrist, just making that double pump here, is the beginning of how to take the wrist turning of the palm and start to get that a little bit into the body with the weight shift. So sooner or later, as you get, and you get doing these really big, you'll see the body very much has to accommodate to make this happen. So the extremity has been used to find and train the center. Then after that, the center just has to move. And all of a sudden, that can whip out to the extremity. But this is a basic, you train from outside to in, then once you can find that inside point and you learn how to turn your hips from this training, then all of a sudden you can use your hips and legs and feet to generate power and send it out. Yeah? Does that make sense? So this is one of the training methods of Bagua so you can get this, this feeling that's flowing and chewing in the body. And you'll see some of it in the Taiji practice as well. Okay, you really have this uh, flowing stuff through the body. But from here, you can just do a nice spear. You can, you can do another one. Let's do it here. But you can practice it. It's going up. Then you hit. Then what? Halfway up, hit. Then pull. Okay? Halfway up, hit. Pull. Halfway up, hit. Pull. And try it. Like when you're here, when you come up here, don't try to go like this, mm -hmm. okay? You only want this action here from the lever in the knee and the sinking of the weight to make that happen. So you may hit this pretty hard. When you come up through here, a little bit soft, mm. and then pop. Mm. Now that, let it just, so this kind of thing, you can see, you, you might easily just want to be able to do this kind of a, of a, of a hit. And of course, it can pierce, it can do a lot of things. This is one part of the hit. Now, this first part is a, a tap onto stomach four and or st stomach five. You, you tap stomach four, and what you do is you're gonna hook, and this part here is gonna come around and hit. Now, this doesn't look like much, but it's like, boom, like this. But it, when you get impact here, and as the impact is taking place this way, you turn the wrist, and you're gonna be hitting on this side. So that's, you know, when you see the single whip in Taiji, you can think about this, pop, pa, pa, very, very quick. You're going to touch and touch, and it's using what? This, this thing we've been looking at. One, two, and it, it looks easy now because I'm moving Robbie's head this way, and then I'm moving it back this way. But this happens very, very quickly, and it's very, very dangerous when done quickly. You know, and it's just like a rolling action, all right? So just, just try that a little bit. Just try to try to hit and then roll and move. Uh, actually, I'll give you a few more things. You can always use this, this, this hit here. If, if you hit, you usually get a little bit of a thing. And then when you come around, now you have this one, okay? And from here, you can use the bicep bump or you can continue to turn him. Uh, so you can try this too. You can, you can actually hit here and then use the co coiling action here. So watch, so I'm here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna come up here halfway, 
And then as I want to come back, even instead of this, I can stay here or I can pull this way. I can use my weight and my body shift for this. So we're gonna go one, wrap here, and pop like that. You can use the bicep bump, or it can be continuous, and you can use it this way. One, two, here, there's your, you guys already do these things, right? There's your, there's your neck lock if you step through and start to walk. And later on, we'll walk the circle and we'll do a change that looks just like that. Okay, cool. I, I'm doing this and I'm making this and I'm trying to move Robbie's head here. But you know, he's a strong guy, so he's just gonna lock down. See, now I can't move it, but it doesn't matter because what I'm gonna do is just come over the top. So to do this is the same as to do this. What did I have to do? Here, so, so, it, so you see, I start doing it with my fingertips and you got a big strong guy there that can lock down. So now the body has to move to create that, that posture. So from here, as you start to turn, nothing wants to happen. You need to pass it. And when you come around, like this, okay? which is what? Teacup and hip. Teacup and hip. And that's what's happening in the body because when you start to pull here, if nothing wants to move, I've got to create space. I've got to create that space in here and shift my weight, come around and be able to get a solid strike and I don't have to really pull it far and hit it just here like this okay so you can see you can circle the entire head that way it's nice to be able to, to, to get this get a bicep bump pull them through get a chin lock but if you can't and he's here you have to go around and then pop like that so you're doing a passing movement with this idea and you're starting to incorporate this part see that here goes up and over, and when it comes around, there's the next part of the technique.